Greetings, friends, and welcome back to the video podcast that normally includes Pastor Paul Thompson and uh, Steve Autry today. There is no Steve Autry. Steve is uh, in parts unknown. No, Steve's taking a much needed uh, a spiritual direction break and uh, getting the battery recharged. So I've invited Rod Arters, the associate pastor of Huntersville United Methodist Church, to join me today. Uh, we are getting ready to enter into the time of the church's life. We really find that as we read the Gospels, uh, it's been described that the Gospels are really basically the last week of Jesus' life with an extended introduction. And if you go back and compare, so much of the writing of the New Testament really is about the last week of Jesus' life. But then this extended introduction, Mark, Mark doesn't even include a birth narrative but uh, jumps into Jesus' ministry. So we thought today we'd like to work, your way, work our way through with you through some geography, through some events that lead up to Holy Week, where we begin next week, again, the events of Holy Week, some of the most earth-shattering, most, most important times uh, of the church's life, of Jesus' life. So we begin today, Rod, and I want to begin in Matthew chapter 16, and um, we recently had an opportunity to go to Israel together. And um, we decided that we wanted to go. The guide wanted us to go to Caesarea Philippi. Yeah. Do you remember that, I taking remember. that trip? Yeah, was, what was that like? It was amazing. It was really amazing to be there and with the history and just to see. Almost, almost feels like it, it, it's the same place today as it was way back then. So... So uh, nearly probably 13, 1400 years ago, uh, right after the Greek time, there would have been this uh, temple of Pan that would have been uh, uh, established in a place called Caesarea Philippi, again, after Caesar and um, uh, Philip. And this, this town literally had, a, had this temple, this, this beautiful, it, it, took a, it took a cliff and they re reshaped the cliff into this uh, temple-like structure with, with uh, panoramic art and views and water that flowed. And, and to, Rod, just briefly describe what you saw in Caesarea Philippi. Oh, man. Yeah, I knew you were going to ask that. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it, it's funny. You see uh, structures like that. We just don't have that here. So we there, don't have that. There's just no frame of reference unless you, you're looking at a history book or you're looking at old pictures. So for me, it was kind of, I was blown away to be actually there knowing the history, knowing the, the, the richness of this place. Um, it, it looked original. I mean, that's, that's right. the best way I could describe it. It looked like original. And what they did there at the Temple of Pan is that they offered sacrifices to the pagan gods. Sometimes those sacrifices were animals, and at other times we believe those sacrifices were human sacrifices, likely infant, mm. uh, infanticide is what they were what they were doing, and and literally as the water flowed from the caves down in a, in a waterfall into this pool, literally that that water would have been red from the uh, from the red of blood, which would have been part of the sacrificial system, so. As we pick up today in our conversation in the Gospel of Matthew in chapter 16, Jesus makes this trip up with the disciples to Caesarea Philippi. Now again, looking at the geography, if you understand that the place called Israel today is rough and dirty, the same, shi same size and rough and dirty, the same shape of, uh, of, of New Jersey. And if you can imagine way up in the northern part of New Jersey, Jesus decides to go from, let's say, in the northern third, he goes all the way to the top. Caesarea Philippi would have been in the northern part, uh, this established town. And what is the question, Ride, that, that Jesus asks his disciples at Caesarea Philippi? Uh, the question, it's really a question for all of us today, but it's, it's who do you say that I am? You know, this most pertinent of all questions. Jesus looks at his disciples and says, uh, who do people say that I am? And the answers that the disciples give at first, you know, well, some say you're Elijah, some say you're John the Baptist, and, and, and maybe a couple of other things. So the disciples were looking at that, that question at first as if, you know, what's the, what's the rumor mill? What's the scuttlebutt? What's, the, what, what's everybody conjecturing about who you are? 
And then Jesus says, but who do you say that I am? That's right, yeah. And Peter's answer, it changes a little bit from Mark and Matthew's gospel's perspective, but Peter, in essence, gets on the surface the answer right. Underneath, we're not sure if Peter really understood what that means, but Peter answers, you are are the Christ. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now, just imagine that Peter... The other disciples and Jesus have made this three-day special, uh, you know, special circumventive move all the way into this northern part. Three days on the road, so that Jesus can get in front of the Temple of Pan mm-hmm. to ask that most pertinent question of disciples, as they've got this Temple of Pan, this pagan false god mm-hmm. up there. Jesus says, "Who do you say that I am?" Peter's answer: "You're the Christ, the Son." of the living God. God. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think it's not accidental. Um, you and I don't even go five minutes out of our way. <laughs> right. But for Jesus to make this intentional, not a drive, not a bus, a walk uh, in front of this, this very place, I think this, he's drawing the contrast between what other gods are and who he is. And, and Peter, I think rightly in the, in the power of the Holy Spirit, <laughs> nailed it. So then we believe, based on uh, Matthew and Mark's um, uh, Gospels and the timeline and the way that they did, that basically Jesus would have left that area, would have made His way south, and would have begun, in essence, His journey toward Jerusalem, which is way in the southern part of the country. And on the way, they stop at this place that is alternately known as Mount, Mount Tabor, uh, Mount Hermon, and, and what happens uh, at this, what, you said it was around the third highest peak? Yeah, it's, it's one of the higher peaks in Israel, but um, this is the Mount, the, the Transfiguration, this is where it occurred. The Mount of Transfiguration. And let's talk a little bit about what happens on the Mount of Transfiguration. Uh, Transfiguration Sunday was this past Sunday. It's often the Sunday before Palm Sunday. So there is a, a, a real connection. But on the Mount of Transfiguration, Jesus takes Peter, James, and John up with him on this high mountain, Mount Tabor, likely also known as Mount Hermon. And when he gets there, his clothes are transfigured, dazzling white, and and two guys show up. Who are those two guys? (laughs) Elijah and Moses. Elijah and Moses. Again, someone once said, you can't understand the New Testament until you understand the Old Testament. And this idea that Moses being the lawgiver being that Elijah, who was considered the greatest of the Old Testament prophets. So here it is with Jesus, with the law and the prophets Mm. gathered together, and and Jesus is transfigured before them. Uh, That's where Peter just becomes overwhelmed, (laughs) says, let's build something, let's mark this up, let's let's do this. And Peter wants to build uh, tabernacles, (laughs) wants to build booths to... To do that, isn't yeah. that so much like us? Yeah, it's it's very much. He didn't want to leave. Uh, you know, the, the the version I have here it says that uh, Jesus's clothes, his garments were so radiant they were exceedingly white that no launderer on earth could whiten them like that. So yeah. it must have been a powerful experience that Peter did not want to leave. Right. Um, and for Peter, he grew up with the law, grew up with the prophets. Here he is, literally in the flesh, the law and the prophets with Jesus. I you, you can't blame the guy for wanting to. Right, to, to hold on to yeah. that. And, and here's what's fascinating next is there's that same voice that we had heard. There was the voice we had heard at Jesus' baptism. And we hear a very similar voice at now at this transfiguration. At the baptism it said, you know, this is my son with whom I am well pleased. Uh, you know, th- with him I am well pleased. At the Mount of Transfiguration, this is my son and the voice says, listen, listen to him. To him yeah. But it's especially what Jesus is saying that he especially wants the uh, Peter, James, and John, and, and maybe even Moses and Elijah, because Jesus has just announced that he's headed south to Jerusalem, and what's going to happen there? Well, he, he made it pretty clear. He's going to die. I mean, he, said it, he says it three times yeah. between that week and the next week, I am going to Jerusalem, and there I'm going to suffer and die. I'm going to be arrested, persecuted, and they're going to kill me. Yeah, yeah. And, and yet Jesus yeah. still sets his face toward Jerusalem and embarks on this journey, which is not only uh, a spiritual journey, it's a metaphorical journey, but it's a geographical journey. Yeah. 
where do we go from, Rod? What's the, what's the geography like in the northern part of the country <clears throat> down to the southern part? Well, the northern is, is, is rich. It's, it's, uh, it's green. It's, it's, it seems very, it's a nice place. We, we spent some time up there and it, it's really nice. The further you go south, you're running into desert. You're running into rocks. You're running into a less, uh, less um, comfortable <laughs> environment. Sure. Yeah, you, you go from you know the lush plants and and fruits and mm -hmm. vegetables being grown, it really a, a, a lush, just deeply agrarian area. And the further south you get, you're actually going lower in altitude, to the point where you get to the yeah. lowest part on the yeah. uh, point of the face yeah. of the earth yeah. and around the Dead Sea. So. Tomorrow we'll pick back up on this both geographical and spiritual journey, and uh, we so appreciate your time today, and we do hope you uh, hope you'll join us again tomorrow.